Well, I'm sure I don't have to talk again of my respect for the Rolling Stones and the things that they do, but it always is the greatest pleasure to welcome them to the studio. Bill Wyman joined us towards the end of the last series, and tonight, just a couple of weeks before the release of the Stones' new album, It's Only Rock and Roll, it really is good to be able to welcome Keith Richard. How are you? You're all right. Keith, let's talk about the album to sure. start off with. Yeah. When did you record it? When was it finished? Well, we started uh, before Christmas, uh, actually about three weeks after we finished the European tour, and we had uh, Billy Preston with us, and we recorded in Munich, very good studio, and uh, the band was very hot coming off the road, you know, and so it was very fast, and we cut half the album in two weeks, then everybody split for Christmas, and you know, gorged and everything. After that, uh, in about February, we came back to Munich again with Nicky Hopkins on keyboards and did another two weeks. And that was basically it. We'd cut enough tracks for the, the album and some left over, you know. Mm. And uh, after that, we left it until uh, April, I think, when we came to London. Mick and I to start doing the vocals, and uh, that's the really hard work, the mixing. and. How long did the mixing take this time, Keith? The mixing took about six weeks, two months altogether. Mm. The team on the album really is very much the same, isn't it? Nicky and Billy Preston. Yeah, yeah. Keyboards, and, and our, of course, Stu is on one, our, our favourite pianist, yeah. our resident keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> How does the, the production of a Stones album work, Keith? Is it basically really you and Meg? Well, this time it was because this is the first one we've done without Jimmy Miller mm. since uh, he did Beggar's Bank was the first one and he did Up Until Goat's Head Soup. And this one we decided we'd like to have a go again ourselves. Mm. Was the last time was Satanic Majesty, which received mixed reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was, uh, it's funny, it's actually it's quite easy to do it once you get in to the Rolling, and maybe because the band had come off the road, it was so much easier because everybody was into playing, you know. Are all the band involved all the time with the recording of the Stones album? Um, basically, everybody's together to cut the tracks. After that, everybody sort of disappears and leaves it to Mick and I because uh, they get confused after a while. And everybody sits in the studio saying, uh, oh, this, no, this should be louder, this should be so... We end up usually with Mick and I struggling along by ourselves. Because <laughs> <laughs> you yourself lately have been working with Ronnie, Ronnie Wood. Yeah, yeah, I did. How, how did that come about, Keith? Well, that came about while Mick was doing a few difficult vocals on his own for an album. And uh, I was sort of just hanging around, with nothing to do particularly. One night Ronnie called me up and said, Come down, I've got this fantastic rhythm section. Willie Weeks, Andy Newmark, and Andy Newmark was with Sly right, on the Fresh albums. Mm. And Willie Weeks is known for his stuff with Donny Hathaway. And also, I think he's taken over sort of Chuck Rainey's position at Atlantic, doing Aretha sessions. You know, he's like a New York's hot bass player. You know, and uh, I went down there just one night to uh, see what was happening, and I got roped in to do a guitar overdub. And uh, after that, I lived there for a month. <laughs> I, didn't see, <laughs> I didn't see daylight again. And uh, I got involved enough to write a couple of songs there. And I, I got to the point, I think, where Ronnie was sort of halfway through the album. And uh, I said, I think it would be a good idea to do a couple of oldies, you know. I like doing oldies myself, it's a bit selfish. <laughs> and uh, and so we uh, we hunted around the old single with Pyle and we found uh, Am I Grooving You, Freddie Scott oldie, Burt Burns wrote. And uh, the old James Ray number, If You Gotta Make a Fool of Somebody, which um, was made famous by another English leaping gentleman. And uh, it turned out very nice, it was a very nice balance of material, I thought. Mm. It turned out great, and to play with that rhythm section was enough of a turn on to do those gigs at the Kilburn site. Right. Yeah. And uh, all in all, very enjoyable for me. Has that really sort of motivated you to do more things outside the stands, Keith? Well, I, 
I've got one little thing I want to do in Jamaica with some Rastafarians who, um, I don't know if we should explain any more about Rastafarians, but they're very heavy, happy dudes. And uh, they play with uh, drums and they chant and they've got some amazing songs. And they sort of roped me in to play guitar because they'd never heard, uh, well, they'd never had a guitar around before. You know? So they dragged me in, there and I got into it, and I got my reggae chops together. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I go back there, I'd like to sort of put it down on tape properly. Because you know? mm. do you get to see many bands yourself that maybe you would like to record? I mean, uh, really, what I'm saying is perhaps are you thinking about making the Rolling Stones label more active in that sense? I'd love to. The idea's great, but by the time we've done our things, and what is it, it never seems to be time to really sort of go out and find a band that nobody's heard. I mean, I'd love to. I mean, there's a lot of bands that I'd like to record, you know, just for the fun of it, you know, like The Meters or uh, Little Feet, you know. I mean, it would just be a gas just to do that, you know. But, um, well, that's another story, you know. I'd like to do it. If there's any bands around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's happening in the future with the Stan Star? Keith, are you planning a tour in the uh, new year? Yeah, I think that we should probably be going to the States in the spring. Yeah. Instead, I, I th we were supposed originally to be going this year. It was sort of an inevitable thing once every two years. But suddenly everybody got up and said, oh no, we're not, can't make it this year. We want to finish the record and get that done. And so uh, we put it off until the spring, although maybe a few gigs around Christmas would be nice. I'd like to get on the stage again. Because mm. yeah. we were talking earlier now about the kind of venues that you're doing, Keith, and really they're enormous venues. That you're yeah, playing. and they get bigger and bigger yeah. every time. You know? are, are you wanting, really, to do smaller things now? Well, you know, it's kind of selfish to sort of go into a city if it's, say, 60,000 people want to see you and say, oh, we want to play in a 3,000-seater hall, you know, because the other 57,000 have to just lump it, you know. So the thing to do, I think, is to do the big ballpark and then do the small theatre as well. And so 63,000 people can kind of change. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are involved now in getting a stance tour on the road? Uh, it's uh, innumerable. I mean, there are 40 or 50 people carried about on an American tour is slightly less on a European gig, I think. Mm. But um, it's a lot of people, and it takes a lot of time to set the tours up, you know, which may be... I mean, if you're thinking of a tour in the spring, I guess they're starting to sort of get the venues together now, you know, mm. or very shortly, anyway. Do you enjoy touring, Stone? I love it. It's the lifeblood for me. For any band, I think, any band that doesn't play live is isn't is only half a band as far as i'm concerned because that is where it all comes from you know and i think with this new album there's a sort of feel about it just because we'd come off stage just three weeks before mm. and we'd been playing for two months solid you know and you can feel it you know yeah that's true it's well old you know. <laughs> <laughs> so just finally really keith britain are there any plans now to play, I mean, aside from Christmas, are you thinking about a tour, really, for Britain? Um, I'd like to play England. I, you know, we always have a good time touring England. And if it hasn't sunk before Christmas, uh, I wouldn't mind doing a few gigs. <laughs> Keith, thanks for coming in okay, today. OK, thank you, Bob. Nice right. to And don't forget that the new Stones album, It's Only Rock and Roll, gets its release like it. on October the 18th. Right. Johnny Rivers and the excellent Andy Fairweather Lower here on next.